time sequence simply means we live over time. Time passes and different information comes in, technical information, environmental concerns, financial information, demographic changes, political changes. Things come in over time. And at any point we have to make a decision, we use what is available to us up to that moment in time. So we have a system with two characteristics, input over time, and making the best use of what is available to us at this moment in time. Two very broad characteristics. Now let's look at a system which has just those characteristics. And that's what I've got here. And these pieces represent input, and at ev every moment we want to try and make the best use of what we've got. Best use means putting them together to give a simple, coherent shape that you might describe to someone over the telephone. So we get a rectangle. And if you want to be very pernickety, you can show the long side is equal to two widths, that's one width. So we get a rectangle which is three times as long as it is wide. Perfectly satisfactory. Time passes, we get another input. Sensibly, economically, efficiently, we build on what we've got. We get a rectangle which is four times as long as it's broad. Time passes, we get further inputs. Sensibly, economically, efficiently, we build on what we've got. And then we say, what a pity it doesn't fit. <laughs> or more often we say, that's good enough anyway. <laughs> now, what has happened is we have been right at each stage. But in order to go forward, we have to go back and change a concept, an idea, an arrangement, which in its day was the best possible idea. We go back and we change it. And then the next stage is very easy. We just get a bigger square. So here we're looking at a very basic principle, that any system with an input over time and the need to make the best use at any moment will also have the need to go back and change what was right at the time. In other words, if that's right, that's right, that progress may not come there, it may by going back, changing that, and moving forward. Now, of course, there always are some people in an audience who will dispute that, and what they will say is this. They will say at the second stage, when this comes along, that instead of doing what most people do, that being super smart, they themselves would, of course, have realized that possibility and would not have run into any trouble at the next stage. But alas, not so, because if someone had done that, then I, in my role as a future, would have given this piece next. <laughs> and so they would have been better off with the other arrangement. In other words, unless you have complete knowledge of the future, which is rather hard to get, there is no way you can avoid the need to go back sometimes and change what in its time was the best possible arrangement or concept. Another point which arises from this is the sheer sequence. In any field, the sheer sequence in which the information comes in will very largely determine and limit the concepts you can have. In other words, if this piece had come first, followed by these two pieces, your chances of doing that would have been much higher. But if those pieces came first, then that was the concept you formed, and that was the next stage. In other words, you are committed in a direction by the concepts you have, by the sequence of information.